Hey folks, welcome back to another top 10 list in my little uh, Gen Con wish list extraordinaire things. I'm basically just doing three top 10 lists. I did uh, my top 10 games that I would go demo if I were going to Gen Con. This is the top 10 games that I would be interested in purchasing, uh, maybe. If I were going to Gen Con, then I would definitely be interested in checking out these 10 games. Tomorrow I'm going to be doing one on my must-haves. I would definitely be making a beeline to those 10 games. But maybe you'll be interested in the list and maybe this can help you narrow down some of the ones that... Uh, you're going to be interested in going to check out if you're going and that's why I'm kind of making this list trying to help you guys out to see if I can help you whittle down some of those uh, choices or <clears throat> add to them probably the latter but anyway let's get to it so my number 10 is a game called my city roll and build now my city roll and build I really enjoyed my city I really enjoy it. We haven't finished the game, the legacy aspect of the game yet, but I really enjoy the game. We've played it uh, in uh, uh, many times as a one-off uh, because you can uh, with that game, but uh, we haven't finished the legacy version of it, but we really, really enjoy the game. So I'm thinking that My City Roll and Build is going to be much of the same kind of enjoyment, but I don't really know for sure because Roll and, roll and Write games or Roll and Build games, as this one is Build... Hmm, <laughs> that's kind of phonetically the same. Uh, those are kind of hit or miss for me. So I'm, I, I usually don't know for sure that I'm going to like it until I try it. So that's why this is only a game that I'm interested in and not a must-have. So uh, that's my number 10. Uh, my City, Roll and Build. Of course, it's done by the OG Reiner Knizia, uh, put out by Cosmos. And uh, the tagline is, Roll and Write Adaptation of the Award-Winning City Building Game, My City. Well... Kind of a mer mer for the uh, tagline, but at least it's informative. Dice rolling, grid coverage, paper and pencil scenario, mission campaign game, and it also has a solo, so, solo or a solitaire variant. So there you have it. My number 10, My City, Roll and Build. My number 9 is a game that uh, I just saw that Rado was um, on the cusp of praising highly, and that is Forbidden Jungle. I really have enjoyed the other two uh, Forbidden games. Forbidden Desert and I think Forbidden... I can't... D Forbidden Desert and Forbidden Island, I think is what it was called. Uh, could be wrong with that, and I don't want to search for it on my shelves. I have both of them, but I just don't know exactly where they are. So Forbidden Jungle is like, okay, yeah, I'm definitely interested. Now, show me what you got. And with Rado saying that he's really excited about it, that's got my interest peaked a little bit more. Probably would have at least moved it higher on this list. Might have had enough of a oomph to get it over into the must-have list. But for right now, I'm super interested in it. Uh, Matt Leacock, of course, <laughs> we talk about OG. Uh, Matt Leacock is there. Game Ride is a, ga is a uh, company that I'm uh, super comfortable with just saying I'm going to buy it. And, of course, it is a cooperative game. You're trying to probably get yourself out of the jungle uh, cooperatively, uh, just like you're trying to get off the island. You're trying to find your way through the desert and the other ones. So I think it's probably going to be more of the same, but just in a different setting with different challenges and things that are thrown at you. So I'm definitely interested in it, but I need to see more. That's my number nine. Forbidden Jungle. My number eight is a game called Moon River. Bruno Cathala is the one that kind of put this one on my radar because I, I've enjoyed a lot of his games. Uh, he is a classic designer. And uh, most of the time, not as much as Z, but most of the time, uh, I've enjoyed Bruno Cathala's games. And uh, so when his name is on something, my interest is automatically peaked. Uh, but on top of that, Blue Orange Games is a great company that I like a lot of their games that they put out as well. So that has my interest going as well. Build your own King Domino-like tiles. Okay, well, I really like King Domino. So this has a lot of things going for it. What mechanisms are we talking about? Tile placement? Check. Open drafting? Check. Uh, turn order is stat-based. Okay, American West territory building. So these are all things that are pointing me down a path that says you're going to enjoy this game. So I would definitely be interested in going to check it out. Whether I absolutely end up buying it, 
if I were there, we'd have to see how the vibe went as I was checking it out. But I'm definitely interested because of all the things I mentioned. But that's my number eight, Moon River. Now, as I said in a previous list, I'm not huge on horror themes. However, Funko Games has been coming out with a lot of family weight games that are based on movies. And I've got a ton of them already. That's a, that's a little bit of hyperbole, but I do have a lot of them. Uh, and some of them are on games that, I mean, movies that I haven't even watched, but I still enjoy them a lot. So when I saw that they had a game coming out for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, this Texas boy had to, uh, I mean, the word Texas just drew me in and I was like, oh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay, well, or, uh, but Funko Games, Prospero Hall, they usually kind of knock it out of the park as far as my fun factor is, is concerned when I play one of their games. Do I think that they are these great groundbreaking games? No, but I have fun playing them. And at the end of the day, that's kind of the name of the game, right? You want to have fun playing board games. And that's what happens usually when I play one of these games that have these uh, movie IPs attached to them. They just do a great job with it. Uh, a group of people must avoid ending up on a family of cannibals dinner table. Well, that's putting it about as nicely as you possibly can, I think. Uh, but good job on that tagline. Give that person a raise, whoever came up with it. Uh, let's see. We don't even have any mechanisms that are listed on this one. It is a one versus many game. Um, movie, TV, radio theme, and horror is the category. We don't even have any uh, uh, mechanisms that are listed here on the Geek without diving too far into it. But it's a Funko game de designed by Prospero Hall. I enjoy this uh, Think Tank's games. So I'm willing to go check it out and see what I think. My number six is from uh, Monster Fight Club, and this is called Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone. Now, I actually had the ability to work for Monster Fight Club for uh, the last few months before I started doing this on my own, and it... I got to do. I got to really dig myself into Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone. Uh, my my buddy in the company, Dan, and I, we did a lot of painting videos for Cyberpunk Red Miniatures. Uh, when I went to Dice Tower West, I was able to demo the game to a, a bunch of different people that were there. Uh, uh, so this is a game that I am interested in. It's a great miniatures game. It's got a great system. It's got a very rich. Uh, thematic system that it's built around. Uh, the Cyberpunk Red World, built by Mike Pondsmith at uh, R. R. Talsorian Games, is a great world to uh, uh, play games in. I mean, if that makes sense. I remember when I was back in high school, a senior in high school, I remember during our lunch hour, we would play uh, Cyberpunk uh, RPGs. And then we would go over to my buddy's house and play Cyberpunk and, uh, you know, D&D &D and all of these other kinds of things um, uh, over the weekends. But Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone is a great little miniatures, tabletop miniatures game. Uh, and the package that they've uh, constructed is a very uh, good core base box. Uh, so this is one that I would also be uh, interested in going to pick up. Very much so. So uh, you need to go check it out. Number six, Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone. My number five is a game that, uh, qu quite frankly, the theme and the box cover grabbed me because the name of the game is called Bonsai. And so here's the tagline. Take on the role of an expert bonsai master intent on growing their own bonsai, uh, bonsai trees. Um, so uh, I don't know any of the designers. I don't know the artist. So, But the art is really good looking. Uh, but I don't know anything. We got open drafting and we got tile placement for the mechanisms employed. Those are both green check marks for me. Uh, no red flags there. The artwork is putting it over the top. So I really think that this is one that I would be very interested, probably would be purchasing it based on the look and the theme alone, because it's got a kind of an, an eccentric, a novel theme. Uh, and I like games that have that because when you find people that have these niche interests and you're able to say, hey, 
I got a board game that's based around that thing that you love doing. Would you like to play? It gives you a really, it's kind of like low hanging fruit. It gives you a really interesting step into their life. They're not always going to want to do it, but the more eccentric, the more novel themed board games that are out there, the more chances I'll have to say, hey, uh, you like doing that. You like this thing that you're interested in. I have a board game that is about doing that. Would you like to try it out? And those are the kinds of opportunities that I like to try to make. So bonsai, I think, is going to be one of those things. I don't know if I'm ever going to run into a bonsai tree person, but <laughs> you never know, right? So bonsai is, has made the list. My number five, I, I would hopefully uh, be, be able to go check it out. But sad face, won't be a Gen Con. You can, you can go check it out, though. Let me know what you think. My number four is a game that uh, is called Hamlet. Now, the tagline for this one is Grow a Humble Hamlet into a Bustling Town. So, some of the mechanisms employed is what grabbed me on this one. I love network root building games, and I love uh, tile placement games, and I also enjoy pick up and deliver games. So, all three of those are green check marks for me. These are all pointing me down that road. I don't know the designers, I uh, don't really even know the. Um, not familiar with Mighty Boards. I don't know if they've done anything that I've played in the past, but one to four players, 25 to 100 minutes. So it's, you know, it's right around that one, uh, one hour probably is where it's going to uh, fall to maybe an hour and a half. Uh, so that's what I'm looking forward to. 2.9 on the weight scale out of five. So you're right there in the middle. So it's, it's kind of the right weight game for me. Uh, but all those things kind of, kind of point me to the fact that I would like this one, but I need to check it out. My number three is a game called Patriot. And frankly, honestly, transparently, the name of the game is what pulled me in. I was like, oh, Patriot. That sounds cool. I think I want to check that game out. What's going on? Well, then I saw Grand Gamer Skill. They put out some pretty good games. I've liked their games in the past, so I'm willing to continue looking. Don't know uh, the designer. Don't know the artist. But here we go. Advance Science. Deploy Mechs. Save or assassinate the president of Carmonia. Okay, so you're either going to be, it sounds like at least, uh, on the surface, that you're either going to be protecting or trying to n kill the president of the uh, uh, country that you're part of. Deploy mechs. <laughs> yes. Advancing science. So maybe there's going to be some tech trees involved there. I don't know. Mechanisms employed. Action points. Area movement. Dice rolling. Hand management. Player elimination. Ooh, that's a little bit of a squeaky one. But I'm still kind of on board. You've got variable player powers. You've got a team-based game variant, it looks like. And there's also voting. Voting, I'm not too hot, too hot on. So the player elimination and voting are, are a little bit of a strikes against them. But hand management, dice rolling, area movement, action points, variable player powers. Uh, five out of eight, yeah. I think I'm wanting to uh, check this one out. Plus, it looks like it's got some cool components to it. And I like the theme. For me, good components and a good theme can outweigh some of those things that I might not be on board with and push it over the top. That's why it's on my number three for this list. So if I were there, I'd be wanting to go check it out. That's Patriot, my number three. My number two, uh, going back to that idea of having a uh, eccentric or a novel theme based on it, and uh, the perfect wave fits into that category for me. Uh, there have been a couple of surfing games over the over the uh, years that I've played and enjoyed. Uh, don't uh, Jason Mowry, Chase Williams. I don't know either of those guys for the designers. Uh, but the op, the op, the op, uh, USA Opoly. I do. Um, I have liked a lot of their games that have come out in the past. So I'm I'm willing to give them a nod if they come out with something new. Grab your board, paddle out, and surf your way to greatness, dude. Hang loose, brother. So that's what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. I do like the look of this game. It looks like it's a simple game as well. Only two out of five for the weight. Uh, mechanisms are action points, in-game bonuses, hand management, uh, hidden victory points, open drafting. What else have they got here? A couple more. Pattern building, a set collection. Man, that's a slam dunk. Uh, what have we got? Thirty to sixty minute game. Yep, that's a that's a that's. Uh, a sweet spot type game for me if it works well. So I'm, I'd be interested in going to check it out, possibly purchasing it. That's the perfect wave by the OP. 
And my number one is a game that uh, I actually picked up the base game, uh, The Adventures of Robin Hood at Dice Tower West. And uh, they told me that this expansion was coming. And uh, Friar Tuck in Danger for The Adventures of Robin Hood. This would be an absolute auto buy for me. Um, and now it's my number one on this one. It didn't make my must haves because we actually haven't finished that game yet. So. Um, uh, but we want to go and we want to continue playing it and we really enjoy that game. So it is my number one here, which is basically kind of like saying it's, it's a must have. So it just didn't make the must have list. But if one of those didn't make, you know, if I wasn't able to get one of those, this one slides right over into that must have list. Uh, it's a cooperative game, scenario, mission based game. And there's a lot of storytelling. It's, it's involved in it as well. Really enjoy the game. Great family game as well. So that's why it's my number one on this interested list because I really, really, really want to go try to get it. But I'm not going to be a Gen Con. So I do have a couple of uh, uh, honorable mentions. Uh, the first honorable mention, uh, well, actually both of them, I believe. No, one of them is, is from Funko. It's Scream, the board game. Again, <laughs> I'm not a huge horror-themed game, but I really enjoy those Funko games uh, from Pospelo Hall, so I would at least be interested in going to check it out. But I didn't really like the Scream movies anyway, so uh, it would have to be a really good game for me to pick it up, which is why it didn't actually make the top ten. Uh, but along the same lines, Halloween from Trick or Treat Studios, uh, that one, it's just a classic movie. I didn't enjoy any of those movies. I think I saw maybe one of the Halloween movies, but it's one of those things. Oh, you like that movie? Well, here I have a game about it. You know, it's that kind of thing. I'm always on the lookout for that kind of stuff. So, um, and I know Halloween's been really kind of coming back. Uh, here recently, so eh, we'll see. But that is my top ten with a couple of uh, with a couple of uh, honorable mentions there of games that I'm interested in checking out. Maybe maybe I'd buy them. Maybe I wouldn't. I don't know. Maybe you will. You go check these out. Maybe this will help you kind of whittle your list down a little bit or add to it. You never know. Thanks for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.